Hi everyone, it's Sid here from Fundamental Research. And our guest today is Carolyn. Carolyn also has um, two of his team members in the in the in the call, and uh, Carolyn will introduce them. Uh, Carolyn is the CEO and president of Goldplay Mining. We initiated coverage on Goldplay last week. Goldplay is a brand new junior with copper gold projects in Portugal and BC. Uh, its property in BC is is in the Golden Triangle. And Portugal is one of the most attractive mining jurisdictions in Europe. So the agenda for today is I'll kick off the call with our thoughts on gold. And Carolyn will take over from there and introduce us to his company. For listeners, you can either wait till the end to ask questions, or if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in and we'll try to respond to them. Here are some key disclaimers. Please take a moment. All right, so let's talk about gold. Prices are down 6% year over year and underperformed all the mainstream metals. Gold is one of our favorite topics and I, I can talk about it for hours, but today I'm going to summarize all of our thoughts in under five minutes. We have six reasons to believe that gold will perform well in the near term or six months time frame. Before I talk about each of these points, let's take a look at the supply and demand of gold see what has been driving prices uh, in the past. Let's start with supply. As shown, supply has not changed much in the last 10 years, but prices did move across a wide range between $1,000 and $1,900 an ounce. This indicates that price movements were not really impacted by supply. Now let's look at demand. About 50% of demand comes from jewelry, 40% from investment demand, and central banks and the remaining 10% from industrial and other uses. From this chart, we see that gold prices tend to move when investment demand and central banks start buying. Demand dropped significantly in 2021, which is why we saw a decline in prices in the last uh, six months. Now, investment demand and gold prices have historically have had a strong positive relation uh, this tells us that if we, we will be able to predict near-term gold prices by forecasting the direction of investment demand. This brings us to our first point for gold. Interest rates are expected to stay low as the U.S. Fed has no intentions to raise rates this year. Now, gold's value proposition is higher when interest rates are low. Next point is uh, higher inflation. Inflation in the U.S. Is, in the coming quarters is expected to be significantly higher than historical levels. The number one reason for inflation is a significant increase in money supply, which is up 27% year over year. Note that uh, money supply and gold prices are positively correlated. The second reason for inflation is GDP growth. US GDP growth is expected to be 6.4% this year versus negative 3.5% uh, last year. The third factor for gold is that we are seeing uh, the central banks have started buying gold. This trend is expected to continue. As shown. The fourth factor for gold is rising production costs. Notice the big jump in Q1 2021. Our fifth point is that historically, gold prices tend to increase when there's correction in equity markets, especially when tech stocks fall. Considering that tech stocks are currently trading at record high valuations, we're expecting a co uh, correction in equity valuations. And our sixth and final point is that we expect the high volatility in Bitcoin or crypto prices to drive some investors back to gold. Although the run, in, run up in crypto prices uh, was driven by speculators, cryptos, especially Bitcoin, was starting to appeal to investors for its potential to be a capital preservation asset in the future. So those were my six points. With that, I would like to welcome Carolyn, the CEO and president of Goldplay. Carolyn, you'll be able to share your screen. Please go ahead when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for everybody that took the time to uh, participate in the story here. Um, I've got together with myself um, two um, people from my team. Uh, one is Jose Mario Branco. He heads the exploration program for us in Portugal. And then uh, Adam Travis, who is also the CEO of Rough Rider and a member of our advisory board, is joining us also on the call. He is a, a well-known geologist um, with an excellent track record in BC, especially Golden Triangle. 
So we'll try to keep the presentation really short and leave time for questions. You know, we looks like we have about almost 50 people joining us on the call today. Uh, so it's a really nice attendance and I would like to encourage everyone to turn this presentation to a dialogue here more than us going through slides. Uh, we'll be making some forward looking statements about uh, things we're gonna say here. So be uh, reminded about the risks associated with that. Who we are. Uh, Goldplay Mining is really a company I've created uh, late last year after being involved with Tudor Gold uh, for the last two years. Tudor Gold, for those that uh, don't know the story, it's a company that I joined with, it was about 25 million market cap, trading about 25 cents, a big project in Golden Triangle. It was me and Ken Conkin, the geologist, who kind of put things together uh, with the directions of the CEO and drove that to about half a billion dollar market cap, uh, a significant discovery in the Golden Triangle. Uh, prior to that, I also have other track records, good track records in the space. So I've decided to create a company where we are gonna put the best of everything together. And we've started with a great team, uh, you know, the chairman of the board, it's Dr. Deepak Maholdra, it's a world-renowned geologist, uh, sorry, metallurgist. He's been involved with every major project in the world. So that brings us the ability to move projects from discovery all the way to production. And the Marshall is also part of our work. He is the CFO of First Mining Gold. Uh, it's basically Keith Newmeyer's group. So he has been tremendously supportive in our strategy. Uh, I'm not gonna mention everybody. And then Jose Maria, I mentioned earlier, he is uh, leading the projects in Portugal. And he, prior to joining us, he's worked in prior years with Landin Mining. He's had the land in mining operations in Europe for about seven years. So a great team of people that have a track record of success. And more importantly, everybody's a shareholder. So everybody you see here is invested money in the company and owns shares. Management combined owns about 12% of the company. Uh, to make the story even stronger, we put together a, a solid group of advisors. They are led by Walter Coles, who is the CEO of Skina, uh, a very good friend of mine, I'll call him and somebody I really been following closely on his success with Skina. We are very fortunate to have his leadership and guidance because goal plays goal is ambitious. We do not want to be another junior like surviving and being you know, there trading on the sidelines. We have an aggressive plan and we've already started delivering on that with our recent acquisitions and things we've been doing and our hopes are very high. So we're trying to get there through really good people that we we can work with. Adam Travis was on our call today. It's the CEO of Rough Rider himself. He was involved with discoveries of SNEP, SK Creek, and other projects in the world. And Jorge Ramiro, he is the CEO of Rainia Silver, roughly 85 million market cap of company that's uh, got projects in uh, US and Mexico. And they got Peter Mego as, as part of the ge geological team. So, really good, good group of guys. Uh, company has just been trading for uh, literally about three months to date. Um, we've had a really good start on the exchange. Um, we've, uh, we're planning to trade about 15 cents. We never reached lower than 17, 20 cents has been our trading range. More importantly, very liquid stock. We've traded 6 million shares since listed, but the price has never dropped. So there is significant support and interest in the story. We have the support of some important brokerage houses. I would mention Raymond James in Vancouver here. It's been tremendously supportive. Uh, and um, you know we do have a very good support in the shareholder base along with some European investment, high net worth individuals and a little bit of institutional investors too. So what do we have? Uh, we really have a dual focus and why it's a dual focus is very simple. We're focusing on the golden triangle because you know there's still room to make a discovery. And then we are focusing on, a, on one of the most attractive mining jurisdictions in Europe, which is Portugal. Why golden triangle? Well, both myself and Adam and others have really good success in the golden triangle. So we were looking for a project where we can make a new discovery. And as you know, things are not coming in easy these days. Everything has been you know, kind of spoken for or unless you wanna pay a lot of money. So Adam is actually the guy that's identified the Scotty West project. And if you look at the map, which we'll get into a minute here, uh, let me get to the map. Scotty West project, the one in red, it's bordering, um, it's bordering basically the Teuton Grand, 
um, which is part of actually Tudor Gold too, as a joint venture partner. It's in close proximity of Scott of um, Pritium, and it's also bordering the Scotty Resources pro uh, uh, project. Now, the interesting uh, thing about the project is it's a significant land position, about 6,000 hectares, but the project really has never seen work done on it, period. And why is that? It's because it was glacier covered. And, um, you know, it's just really in the recent years that things are starting to show up. So we know we got the right geology, it's next door to some really good projects, and the project has never been explored before. And due to the retreat of the glaciers, we have the opportunity to be the first to do a proper exploration program. So today we've announced that the project um, has already, the program has already started. We're doing an initial roughly half a million dollar program to do a proper ground exploration program with lots of samples and hopefully channel sampling and mapping in an effort to come up with targets for next year's drilling campaign. So we are very excited about that. And should we find anything of significance? Great location. Seven kilometers from Scotty West, uh, from, sorry, from the, from the um, uh, power uh, and the road, really, because there's the, the power line that goes along. Uh, not far away from the Premier Mill, it's about 14 kilometers, roughly 40 kilometers from the deep water of Stewart, Port of Stewart, right? So it's important to keep those things in mind should we, make a discovery and eventually build a mine on the project, right? Um, a little bit more about the exploration program. I won't go into details. As I mentioned, it just started. Um, we've already done the initial interpretations and stay tuned for uh, results as they come forward. Portugal, um, it's a, a very unique opportunity. Um, I'll go back to this slide here to tell you why Portugal. According to the Fraser Institute, uh, they've done a ranking in 2019. Portugal was ranked fifth um, in Europe as the most attractive mining jurisdictions. And they also have some significant mineral deposits there, some existing mines, and the mining history there goes before the Roman times. And, you know, if you pay careful attention to Europe, what's happening and also throughout the world, there's a big push now for you know, electrification, electric cars, and why not? Well, Currently, Europe is importing most of its copper. Uh, there's some produced in uh, Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain, Portugal. For most part, it's being imported. So because of the need to have domestic production, you're seeing countries like Portugal being a lot more amenable to mining. And actually, uh, as a matter of fact, the last two months, they published a new mining uh, law. Uh, there's a lot easier to get things done in Portugal. Um, and, you know, Jose Mario is probably the best, one of the best geologists we can get our hands on because he's got this, an excellent track record in the country, having worked with the Landines for seven years. So even the pure fact of having somebody of his caliber join a, an upcoming company, it's a vote of confidence for us. And, you know, we rely very much on his expertise. Um, we have a, quite a few projects in Portugal, which is, I'm not going to go through all of them, which is nice because it gives us the opportunity to evaluate things and kind of pick our after the best projects we can, we can go after, right? So really in Portugal, we have two things going on. We have uh, an existing license that we've acquired uh, about a month ago. Um, and that includes two historic, one historic mine in copper, uh, which produced um, with minerals ranging two to 3% copper. So very high grade copper mine and uh, a fairly prospective gold project uh, with very little exploration down on it, but there is some drilling and an interesting intersect, you know, seven grams gold and 0.6% copper over five meters. So it's basically begging for additional exploration and hopefully discovery there. So that's the immediate focus of gold pay in Portugal to begin work on those projects and stay tuned for news on what we're going to be doing, we're targeting to start drilling in Portugal probably late September. And on the other hand, we have four more projects um, that we are just waiting for the final documentation to be signed from the government, whereby we're going to get the exploration license directly from the government. And this is the beauty about Portugal. We're getting those projects literally from the government. So there's no middleman. Even if you look at the deal we've announced a month ago, we've done a pretty decent transaction 
uh, very low cost to the company, uh, and yet we're getting the license directly from the government. Four by two, which is the pending one, it's even better. You know, we're paying close to nothing to get those projects from the vendor uh, and getting the license directly from the government. So um, very unique position to be in. Uh, and with that, really, I think uh, what I would like to do right now, would like to turn this into a dialogue with, with you guys. Uh, we have, as I mentioned on the call, uh, Jose Mario, who's based in, in, uh, in Porto. Uh, it's what, Jose Mario, 9 p.m. there in Porto right now. He's available to, to answer any questions about Portugal. Uh, and we also have Adam Travis, based in his home in Kelowna, BC, and uh, he can, uh, really answer hopefully questions about BC and, um, and uh, plans there and project and why not. So uh, Sid, you know, if you wanna open up the floor for questions, you can go ahead now. Absolutely, thank you so much, Carolyn. Yes, we can open the call to your Q&A. Listeners, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in or you can click on the raise hand option and I can unmute you. So while we compile a list of questions, maybe uh, Carolyn, do you wanna start with you know, the, all the Portuguese assets were acquired uh, recently. How, why were these assets overlooked in the past and how did you come up with this opportunity? Just to give uh, the audience some more perspective on the potential of these projects. Yeah, I mean, maybe even uh, Jose Manu can answer that question. I'll maybe comment a, a little bit on that based on my current understanding on Portugal. See, in Portugal, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's just in recent years that the government has been kind of taking mining a little bit more serious and they've kind of opened up uh, the door for additional things to get explored. I'll give you an example. The, one of the projects we acquired, the Barrancos project, one of them is the high grade copper mine, historical mine, it produced in 1970s, was being run by the government themselves. So, um, and kind of sitting idle since, you know, and then it's really, uh, they combined with the low metal prices we've seen over the last, you know, decade, really, literally, uh, with copper being low and why not, things have not moved. Um, but then you know, I'll let Jose Mario maybe comment a little bit more about, you know, Portugal mining in general, Jose Mario, if you could, and uh, why really nobody has done work on those since. Hello, uh, how are you doing? Uh, well, uh, I, I cannot tell exactly why they, they are a bit like idle. Uh, there are a series of circumstances which uh, did, did not help either, especially uh, part of this, this, for the reason these mines were, were mostly closed during the periods where uh, copper was uh, below, below 70 cents per uh, pound. So I, I think the market was one of the reasons, and uh, the other reason was was that the the mines the uh, the, the mining law wasn't really tailored for uh, to enable uh, an aggressive exploration in in such an area uh, due to a series of reasons uh, like uh, lack of, of 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 consistency on the law, uh, coordinating between the the different decrees. It was a kind of a, um, uh, a odd, odd combination which didn't, didn't help uh, uh, mining investment. Um, recently, what we've seen is, was, as, as, as Catalina has been saying, uh, the, new, the new law has been, has been published. And it's, well, the, uh, along with, with the, the environmental concerns that uh, new legislation generally carries. Uh, it, tells, it is also, on, on the other hand, very clear. So more work, but clear and, and, and straightforward. So I think these were the reasons. Uh, the, 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 these, these areas have, have, have great potential, as, as, as Catalina has, has been already uh, pointed out. And uh, what we need now is, is, is drilling more aggressively. Because even even these targets, uh, most of them are drill already. Makes I think sense. I think I think, I think that's. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, thank you, Jose. I was um, I just wanted to add some perspective here too. The the slide we are seeing right now, you can see the historic copper copper mine had a grade of two to three percent copper. 
I want to mention that I want to uh, mention that the global average copper grade that's pretty being produced now it's only 0.5 percent, 0.5 percent. So you can see how higher grade materials uh, these projects have produced in the past. We actually did a, a sector report on copper last week. So if anyone's interested, please check out our platform resourcesfrc.com. You can see our uh, supply, demand, price forecast on co copper. Okay, so moving to the next question, uh, Carolyn. So, are these projects that you're seeing now, are you looking for discovering or delineating large deposits or a bunch of multiple small, um, you know, high grade type of deposits? Yeah, it's a very good question, you know, because that's, we got that actually even from some of our investors, right? They think, look, it's going to have a bunch of small deposits or you're going to find something of scale. So uh, the goal or the objective here would be to focus on finding something of a larger scale, right? Um, so the initial focus of the exploration program would be to try to test the extension and the kind of the, the potential size of those things, right? Um, because they have really been not drilled, period. You know, even the copper mine, the historic copper mine, very little drilling, it was a matter of, you see that when you go mine, it was the government basically with not regard of cost and why not, right? So, uh, you know, they have not seen a proper exploration, modern exploration on them. So, um, Jose Mario, it's, you know, it's currently working to kind of define to us and hopefully we share that with the investors that, the target, the geological target of those projects. And, you know, we are targeting to, to work on the projects that have the, the larger potential um, first, you know, to really try to define something of more scale. Um, and the beauty about it is we can pick and choose we're having so many projects, which one we're gonna really be working on. Uh, for investors to know, you know, the license when you get it from the Portuguese government covers all the projects. So even if you work on one, you're still good with the entire license, right? It's, it's, a, it's a basically a, a work requirement for the license, which covers more projects. So it gives us basically the ability to choose which ones we would really want to work on. Okay. So, in terms of strategy, is it, are you going to look at uh, the projects one by one or simultaneously explore properties or are you going to bring in partners, option partners. Yeah, so initially we would be using existing cash, which I forgot to mention, we still have about $2 million cash in the bank and all that. Um, initially we'll be putting some money in the ground on one or two projects in Portugal. So we, we wanna be able to prove things up a little bit more um, and um, basically use our own money and only focus on one or two. You know, We don't wanna get spread ourselves too thin um, and that's going to be the plan, you know, pick our one, two best projects and maybe find partners for the others, right? Um, you know, we, it's a great option to have all those projects, but we don't want to in a position where we're now spending money left and right and we have little to show for it. We will not make that mistake. We'll pick our best and we'll focus on them and, you know, we'll basically find a home hopefully for the rest that's not fitting our strategy, right? Yes. Now, talking about cash position, how long will this current cash position last? And when do you have to go back to the market? Yeah, we basically earmarked about half a million for BC um, and then roughly about another million dollars or thereabouts, possibly for Portugal as step one. And, uh, you know, so basically it allows us to complete uh, the current plans of the company, which is surface program in BC and begin drilling in Portugal hopefully show some great results there and great success on both um, and then kind of raise more money, hopefully at higher prices to continue, right? Uh, that's, that's the current plan, existing cash to support the existing plans, show some results and then kind of grow from there. Quick uh, comment on the VC. Uh, apparently uh, Gold Play is the first company ever to do a comprehensive sampling or like a mapping program on the property Give me some background on the project on why this has been overlooked, especially being in a nice location in the Golden Triangle. Yeah, I think Adam can add to it. I think he, he is the best person to, to tell Adam investors why do you like this project so much really? And why are you excited about it? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Catalin, uh, here. Um, 
Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, I've been working up in the Golden Triangle now for since 1987. So that's uh, quite a few years now, I guess, 30, 30 plus years. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I co-founded a, a junior called Colorado Resources at the time that has a large land holding and core, core holdings. It's now called QuestX in the, in the heart of the Golden Triangle. And so uh, certainly been on the ground in numerous areas. Um, when I uh, joined uh, Rough Rider Exploration, uh, we uh, wanted to naturally get back into the Golden Triangle uh, with my uh, background, and uh, but found it, you know, pretty tough. Um, uh, certainly, it's progressed quite a bit uh, for the days uh, of when uh, it really seemed like it was just myself and Walt Coles and uh, Rob McLeod. Uh, to uh, lots of other uh, people in the area, not much ground available or uh, prices being very high. Uh, and so after a lot of uh, talking to people and uh, trying to option ground, uh, I started to identify areas that I could stake. And um, this area here kind of jumped out uh, right to close to the Grand Duke mine, uh, just to the west of uh, Scotty Resources and very close to uh, Ascot's premier mine. Yeah, you're showing some good images here. Yeah, that's the best one there. And uh, I always thought, uh, why is there a, a blank piece of ground here? There's no claims here. And uh, then I started to look a little further at it and uh, realized there was quite a bit of snow and ice. Uh, but then I started to pull up some of the uh, detailed uh, satellite, more recent satellite imagery and was uh, quite pleasantly surprised to see quite a few areas uh, melting out of, uh, out of the uh, glaciers. And even on some of that satellite imagery, I could pick out uh, veins and uh, rusty areas. And uh, so uh, for very uh, low cost, acquired this piece of ground. Rough Rider subsequently went on and picked up a more advanced project. And through my relationship with uh, previously with Catalan, he was looking for uh, something to go to launch uh, Goldplay and uh, put him in touch with the Rough Rider people and uh, uh, negotiated a uh, fairly modest joint venture that allows uh, this project to get advanced. And uh, uh, I've been working with uh, Catalan and his uh, technical team to make sure uh, good work gets done. And uh, uh, they've already starting to find some encouraging uh, veins and rusty areas. And one of the first trips I made out there with a helicopter pilot from Stuart, uh, who was always flying to the Grand Duke mine, he just assumed uh, that all these rusty rocks uh, that he'd been flying over must be in, in mineral claims already, uh, because of course everybody knows every square inch of ground in the, in the Golden Triangle is staked up. And uh, he was very surprised that nobody had staked this until um, until we had so uh, I think it's a it's it's a good uh, project with the right geology the right neighbors and it never been explored and it's uh, one of the most exciting things you could do as a geologist to think that you're one of the first persons on the ground to actually look at some of these rocks as they're literally melting out of the uh, snow and ice so uh, I'll give Catalan a lot of credit he's uh, taken the initiative uh, gone out and really pushed uh, things along and is uh, doing a good uh, program here. And so we're very happy uh, having uh, Goldplay as a uh, partner. And uh, I'm pleased to also help uh, Catalan as, a, an, as an advisor on this to uh, see this uh, project and other projects continue to advance well. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity uh, on the ground floor to get into literally an area uh, within a 15 minute helicopter flight of Stuart. So thanks, Catlin. Uh, thank, thank you, Adam. And, yeah. yeah, thank you, Adam. Uh, I think uh, from our perspective, one of the nicest things of the story is that uh, it's basically two different um, portfolios, uh, really untested projects uh, that this is going to give, and the <coughs> company is going to work on both projects simultaneously, both projects, I mean, in BC and Portugal. This will really give uh, the market a lot of catalysts as they keep uh, exploring and advancing the projects. Uh, we put out uh, initiating report uh, last week, uh, which includes 
our preliminary evaluations on both uh, portfolios, BC and Portugal. So if anyone's interested in checking out on how we came up with our fair value estimate on gold play, please go to our platform, researchfrc.com. So Catalyst, um, you know, so Catalyst, maybe, uh, can we talk about your upcoming Catalyst news flow, something uh, investors can watch out for? Absolutely. And, you know, effectively, we've announced today that the work program in BC has started. Uh, so give us, you know, about 30 days or so to hopefully come up with the first set of results there, considering, you know, lab turnarounds and why not. So that should come, you know, hopefully either late August or very early September, hopefully initial results from the BC project. And in the meantime, uh, Jose Maria is busy planning and putting together a budget and a plan on how he's going to hopefully prove up one or two of the best projects in Portugal we got, right? So stay tuned for plans on that. And um, we're targeting to begin drilling late September in Portugal. And then, you know, news flow to start soon after that, right? So the, the nice thing about having a diversified portfolio, it's, you know, you were dealing with a seasonal project for now in BC based on, you know, being able to do surface when it's summer, uh, but then go into winter, uh, hopefully being able to drill you around in Portugal and then continue your news flow, right? So um, stay tuned with, um, we'll try to, to keep everybody appraised of our progress, starting with the BC project and then going into Portugal in the fall. Okay, Carolyn, thank you so much. I don't see any more questions. I think we can wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much to the entire Goldplay team and everyone on the call for taking time today. The recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel shortly. Please ensure you subscribe to our channel and also sign up to be a, sign up to, be a to be a member of our platform, researchfrc.com. You'll get alerts when we publish new reports, and of course, you'll be able to see our list of topics. Thanks again, and wish you all the best and stay safe. Thank you.